Hey guys, uh, welcome back. We're going to take a look at this little iTalk reminder assistant. I think this uh, particular unit dates back to just looking at the directions here. I would assume maybe 2009 or so. It does have some age on it and uh, there is a problem with it. Um, I think uh, she quit talking. So uh, the reminder assistant's not uh, working as it should so uh, let's go. okay let's uh, throw a little AC to this see what we get it should default I think to around 12 midnight and it does and you can see here to set a reminder you just need to say reminder assistant and you can see I didn't get a command back can I help you so um, thus that's the problem that was reported to me um, I believe it's got some old batteries in it and uh, I'll let this thing increment here just for a minute. I want to see if this clock is actually working. So um, I'll pause the video and we'll pick back. Okay, you can see the clock did increment to uh, 12.01. We should be approaching uh, 12.02. And there you go. So uh, the clock itself is working. Again, it's just not responding to the uh, verbal commands. We'll try that one more time. Reminder, assistant. Okay, let's do a little troubleshooting. Again, let me uh, pull out a DC meter. I'm going to check some of the batteries that are in here. They're probably old and no good. We'll do some basic tests, then we'll break into the uh, back and probably start with the uh, power supply section, see what we've got. Okay, let's uh, pop these batteries out here real quick and uh, see what we've got. These batteries may have been in there for a, a long length of time. That looks to be corroded up. Yeah, that's no good. Let me throw a couple fresh batteries in here. And it looks like uh, there's just a couple screws here. Let me fast forward through this part. See if we can get this thing into a couple pieces here and get to the circuit board real quick. At least I got the bottom section and uh, let me work on the top here off camera. I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to the uh, modern day electronics and how to get into some of these cases, but it looks like there's just a little release here. If I just press down, it actually releases. So I've already got the one side here. You can see down. Let me uh, just work this one here so I don't break the uh, case. Okay, I was able to uh, break into the uh, the case here without damaging it. Maybe just a few little flaws, but uh, nothing that would uh, hurt the usability of it. I was able just to press down on this top piece, get these latches to uh, release here from underneath these. Uh, grooves here in the uh, other piece of the cabinet. So uh, let me continue to break this down and see what it's going to take to get the uh, access to the uh, power supply section. Okay guys, uh, got this thing kind of broken into and still got everything soldered in place. Got the ribbon cables attached, but you can see here the uh, the power supply. Uh, this is your uh, primary in and this is your uh, secondary output here going back to the circuit board. And the first connection point you'll see uh, goes right back to this electrolytic uh, capacitor. This is one that would be uh, suspect for me. 
So uh, let's take the uh, DC meter, get this thing plugged back in, and we'll test our, um, our voltage here into the uh, unit itself and just see what we've got for reference. And then we'll check here off of the electrolytic capacitor and just see what the, uh, the voltage is. Looks like our negative side's going to be closest to us. I think it's going to be that pin. Let me see if I can get a pointer here. Um, right here, and then the positive side of the electrolytic is here, if um, I'm looking at that correctly. So uh, let's see what we've got here. Okay, I did plug it in and uh, checked, and I did make certain here that the uh, display is still uh, working, so I haven't created a new problem. So um, again, let's just check uh, the AC voltage here across um, these two points. Okay, 6.75 volts. Again, I don't have a schematic. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. I may just reference that transformer for a second and see if I can find any uh, documentation or anything on it. But uh, that sounds uh, reasonable uh, to me, just for a little uh, DC uh, circuit like this. But we'll look at it and see if there's a, a voltage regulator or something here inside and uh, just see if, again, that makes uh, sense for this particular uh, circuit. All right, let's move along now to the, um, the DC itself off of that um, electrolytic capacitor. Again, best I could tell, the uh, ground side or negative side was here. I'm not really sure I'm reading anything. Let me just look at my connection points again. Maybe I can make them from the uh, the top side of the board there and get right on the leads of that electrolytic and see. Okay, the uh, voltage uh, regulator seems to be uh, working. It's um, can't tell exactly what it is until I pull it out, but it's uh, right in this area. And then the uh, filter cap uh, for the DC side. <clears> of <throat> course, is uh, right in this area. One thing that looks suspect were those uh, solder joints there around the electrolytic, but you can see I'm reading about uh, 8 volts uh, DC, uh, right at 8 volts. And uh, just for giggles, we'll see if we're reading the AC voltage here. There is some. I'd still be suspect. Again, these capacitors are starting to get some age on them. But um, I do have DC output again. Not certain of the voltages that I should have, but um, we'll uh, continue the uh, troubleshooting again. The uh, area around that uh, electrolytic looks a little suspect on the uh, on the board. So let me uh, get the soldering iron here and get it tinned, and uh, I'm gonna just touch those up just a bit and uh, just see if that changes. Um, anything with the uh, performance of the okay I quickly uh, just tried reheating a couple of the uh, solder joints that looked to be uh, uh, concerning and uh, I'll take some alcohol and some wipes uh, here in just a bit and we'll get all the circuit board uh, cleaned back up but um, I need to get the uh, circuit board out so uh, I'm gonna try to leave the uh, display panel attached and I'll, I'll detached here this ribbon cable that goes back to the uh, control switches here on the top and then we'll take a uh, look closer at the uh, where this battery DC voltage goes back in. So um, let me get this uh, desoldered here and um, we'll be right back. Okay guys, I went through all the electrolytic capacitors in here and I'm reading a good DC voltage off uh, every one of them. And uh, one is just a little less than the others. They're all just a little north of four volts DC. Uh, and I don't, uh, see any issues there. None were shorted. 
Um, one thing that was suspect is the uh, speaker itself. So what I've done is hook up my oscilloscope um, here and got the uh, speaker uh, disassembled. And uh, let's take a look at the picture in picture here. And I'll try to um, wake this thing up and uh, just see if we get anything here on the display that represents a form of output. And if we do, then I'll look for a little substitution speaker or just some uh, headphones here or something uh, on a temporary basis just to uh, see if we've got any uh, audio output. And the commands again. Reminder Assistant. So you can see it looks like there's audio output because the reminder assistant is uh, you know asking me for a response okay guys uh, back with you I took time to again check all the electrolytics uh, tidied up the uh, solder joints uh, still need to clean that circuit board with some uh, alcohol get off some of the flux and the other uh, gunk that's kind of built up there but the uh, the problem itself resides here in the speaker output so I've got this uh, temporary speaker here in place and uh, we'll give it a test here reminder assistant can I help you set time please tell me the time including a.m. or p.m. 3 30 p.m. the time is set to 3 30 p.m. okay that's great news so uh, let's do a little troubleshooting on this little small speaker and uh, see if we can uncover the uh, the root cause here Okay, let's do a little DC uh, resistance checking here and uh, just see what we get. Um, I'll go between these connection points on the outside first. Nothing. Just come back to this point. Nothing. Kind of strange. Let me come back to this point. Okay, for whatever reason, this uh, speaker uh, reads open. Here's a look at the uh, the solder joints. I'm gonna I'm gonna fire up my soldering iron and check this out. This almost looks like it's shorted. I'm not really sure why I have four connection points here. So. Uh, let me uh, look at this thing a little closer and just get this uh, solder off and see if I can make sense of this particular uh, speaker. You can see it's uh, 8 ohms, so I would uh, look for us to read uh, just less than that. Um, again, because that would be the impedance, not the, uh, the DC resistance. So um, let me uh, just fire up the solder and iron again and just clean these off here real good. Then we'll make some uh, additional testing. And actually, I may see the problem right now. Can't tell. You guys may see this on camera. I can't tell if that's a, I'm going to have to put on my magnifiers. I can't tell if that's a lead coming from the voice coil right here or not that may be broke or not making connection with this solder joint. That's what it looks like, but uh, let me put on some uh, magnification, clean up these solder joints, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, uh, this concludes uh, this video, but uh, I think lesson learned, uh, just like troubleshooting an antique radio, it might have been better or simpler for me to get to the root cause just by starting right here at the loudspeaker. So wanted to point that out. No different in the modern electronics versus the uh, old uh, legacy antique equipment. Um, either way, it was good to uh, do a basic check on the capacitors and at least understand some of the DC voltages that are present. Um, this speaker is bad. Um, I can't seem to uh, break it down and find the uh, lead. Now, it looks like the positive side 
of the uh, voice coil is open. So I've reheated, moved around, looked for a broken wire, and uh, just can't uh, can't get my hands on it here. So um, I'll look on eBay or something, see if I can find a <coughs> excuse me, find a little replacement speaker, and we can get this uh, iTalk uh, reminder assistant uh, back together and working again. Okay, I started thinking to myself, what the heck? Let me uh, just break into this little uh, miniature one and a half inch uh, low profile speaker. Pop the uh, the cone out and uh, see what we got. So, this is what we've got. I'll try to put this up here where it's showing up on camera. How cool is that? There's my uh, voice coil. And uh, it's definitely broken here up underneath the uh, the speaker cone. Then I went on and cut this other lead. So uh, I'm going to use some magnet wire and just give this thing a shot. See if I can repair it. Put it back down into the uh, frame and uh, see what we get out of it. Not really worried about the audio quality anyway. Just trying to get uh, connectivity again here. So... Um, let me, this is going to be very, very tedious. You can see the uh, diameter of the gauge of the wire. Again, if it's showing up on camera, I'll try to move it around. But uh, I think that the deal is here, just never, never give up. That's what I love about this hobby. So let me, uh, let me just do my best here and uh, see if I can uh, make a uh, repair using something. So I'll provide an update here in a bit.